Hello everyone, good morning. Um, in this video, we are going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle. Um, so this is a concept that you've probably seen before. Um, we talk about it quite a bit in Gen Chem. Also, you probably hear about it in Biochem. It's used really heavily in describing and predicting the direction that reactions are going to go. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to explain Le Chatelier's principle through examples. And so let's start with this hypothetical example reaction. In this reaction, it is, this reaction is a combustion, and it turns out that it is very exothermic, almost a negative 2,800 kilojoules per mole of energy is released when this reaction completes. Now, let's also, even though I haven't drawn it in here, let's assume that this reaction is reversible because the majority of reactions are. So now, let's talk about what happened. Before we do that, let's take a step back. So since this reaction is reversible, it has a value for KEQ, or just K, the equilibrium constant. And that value is going to be equal to the pressure of N2 divided by the pressure of SIN squared times the pressure of O2 squared. Notice that in this equilibrium constant, the solid did not appear. And that is because only gases have pressure. Solids do not have pressure. And even if we were thinking about this K in terms of concentration, the concentration of a solid cannot really change. And so, therefore, it's not going to appear in the equilibrium constant. Another way of thinking about this is that the activity of solids is equal to 1. That is also true for the activity of pure liquids. And so a pure liquid would be something like water. Okay. Now, so if we were to react more SIN, we would add this reactant, we would expect that we would shift the re we would say that we would shift the reaction to products. In other words, we would create more products when we add reactants. That makes sense. We have more reactants, therefore we should get more products. Now, if we do the reverse, if we add products, let's add in two, we would expect the reaction to shift towards reactants. Because if we add more products, this reverse reaction is going to dominate and we're going to shift backwards. Now, if we Add heat. When we add or remove heat, we have to think about whether this reaction is endothermic or exothermic. In this case, this reaction is exothermic. If I can spell. So this means that we can think of heat as a product. 
And so if we add heat, this is the same thing as adding a product. And so we are going to shift we are going to shift to the reactants. Okay, so now what if we do the opposites? If we remove reactants, the reaction is going to respond to remake those. And so that means that the reaction will shift towards the reactants. If we remove products, the reaction will shift to remake those products, and so we will shift towards products. Then with heat, if we remove heat, that is the same as removing a product, and so we are going to shift towards products. So that means that if we do this reaction in an ice bath, that we will get more products from this reaction. So Le Chatelier's is really useful to think about if we are trying to synthesize something and we want to drive a reaction. Um, and how do we do that? Well, you can either remove some products and get more of them, or you can add more reactants and get more products. So I'm going to just work through the answers of this one um, rather than explaining every step of it so that we can get to the K's. Um, I'm happy to talk about this in office hours or during class. Okay, so if I add reactants, I shift to products. If I add products, I shift to reactants. This reaction is endothermic, so if I add heat, I shift to products. And then removing is going to be the opposite. And so removing reactants means that I'm going to make more of them. Removing products means that I'm going to make more products. And removing heat means that I'm going to have more reactants. Okay, so now let's think about what is happening with our equilibrium constant. And let's just use heat as our example here. So if I have this exothermic reaction and I add heat, so I increase heat, that means that I create more reactants. And remember that our K is given by our pressure of our N2 divided by our pressure of our SIN squared times our pressure of our O2 squared. So if I have more reactants, that means that the pressures of the denominator has gotten bigger. So that means that KEQ at, let's say, 350 Kelvin is going to be smaller 
then K E Q at two ninety eight Kelvin. Now let's think about this in the other direction. If I remove heat, my K still has the same form. If I remove heat, then I am shifting the reaction towards products. And so I am going to create more N2, thus increasing the N2. And so we can say that KEQ at 250 Kelvin, removing heat, is going to be greater than KEQ at 298 Kelvin because I've made the numerator bigger in the, in the case whenever I removed heat and made more products. And I'm going to let you guys think through this one. Um, this is the endothermic reaction, thinking through how the equilibrium constant responds in this sort of qualitative Le Chatelier's idea. Okay, in the next video, we're going to get quantitative and we're going to really understand why and how much this equilibrium constant changes with temperature.